back and bigger than ever. It's the unofficial 40 from Soonerscoop.com. Now, here's the entire Soonerscoop crew, Carrie, Josh, Eddie, and Bob. All right, we are back. It is the unofficial 40 right here on Soonerscoop.com. It's your Thanksgiving edition. Ham is optional unless you're dining with Eddie Radosevich who says... Give me that shit. I want some ham. Yeah, I mean it's probably one of the better parts of the entire Thanksgiving week. Depends on anytime what... you can get a ham. Yes, you get like the whole big. You like the big round. Well, piece I don't know of what we're doing like... this year, but I don't even know if there will be ham. There might not be ham, and I'm not going to be happy about there it. There might be. Surely, there's got to be a ham shortage or a something shortage out there. I mean, first off, let's hats off to me for being bold enough to say that I am celebrating Thanksgiving this year. How many how many of you are doing some type of family Thanksgiving? I'm raising my hand. Yes. Last yes. year we did a fried turkey though. Hand raised. I was going to, but now I have COVID Eddie sitting across from me, so I can't <laughs> see my parent my family now. Nah, you're good. <laughs> You're good. And I would never do a Zoom Thanksgiving. That's just never going to Holy happen. shit. I am so done with Zoom. So done. So fucking done with Zoom. I hate it. I hate all these stupid interviews. I, I hate not seeing people in person. I mean, I'm, I've been teetering on the edge for a while. I might be getting pushed over. Yeah, I think it's over. I think it's over for you. There's no turning back now. What if once I you... just didn't do Zooms? What if I just quit? I mean... I mean, it'd just be more shitty questions for it. you guys to listen to. I'll start just having to play them all. We'll have to come in here and do like a separate podcast just to review. At least I could like fast forward and be like, F- this, I'm not listening to this question. Well, you got to put markers in, though. To I know when noticed, you can hear. I have noticed I cuss a lot more on the pod, in, including the F-bomb, than I've ever done before. Because I have to do all the editing. I'm usually the one dropping F-bombs now. It's because the Zooms have started yep. wearing me down and COVID and all this sh- and not getting to go to the press box. It's all coming to a head. I think that speaks for everybody. And I'm not, and I'm not, I'm not like mad at anybody. I, I don't blame Mike Houck for anything. It's just the way it is. It just sucks. And yeah, it's I'm just shitty. done with it. It's shitty. It's it's not good. It's not a good situation. We got to, uh, we got to persevere i'd be willing to pay for questions like bid i think that'd or be maybe, pretty cool maybe we could do like a voting system like he had a good week last week he's first team he gets to ask first questions like i'd be pretty interested newspaper in that too. guys i'm I'd sorry about that. i'm sorry ryan Definitely. aber eric bailey i'm uh joe bettner i'm not leaving any of you out oh, but, he's coming after everybody today but if your questions are shitty the next week i think you should be able to be put on second team and then you have to go after Dean Blevins. <laughs> what if there was like a uh, like a varsity it? and a JV? Well, I would do that, of course. Oh, I think it'd be it'd be like <laughs> we'd have to have a college football playoff committee. Oh God, I can't wait to see you think how Bob they... Stoops would be interested in ranking us. Uh, we could get Barry Switzer, Pat Jones, maybe. I mean, after last we week, we need we need our own olds. After last week, you'd be on the varsity though with Ramondre. What did I do last week? Well, I'm just saying, like. Pat Jones would have to. Oh yeah, he would yeah, have yeah. to rank you high after like show you a little for, bit of respect after the way that Ramondre. After played. our fight, yeah. yeah. After our battles, yeah. About Ramondre, and look, I have said this before. I said that. This, I said that this. I said this this week. Like I have never been saying Ramondre Stevenson is like Adrian Peterson in his prime. Uh, he's not Derrick Henry. He's not. He's not going to be the best back in the league. I don't think, but. He could be one of those guys, and my best comp for him is like Spencer Ware. You remember him from LSU, played for yeah. the Chiefs? Mm-hmm. Like, I think that's who Ramon... But Spencer Ware was one of the best fantasy quarterbacks for like four years. Running back. What did I say? Cornerback. Cor- r- he could back. flip over and play cornerback, maybe. This is what Zoom is doing to me. It's eating away my brain. <laughs> I was scared to do an if-you-care moment there. I, got about, I backed away. <laughs> Might get me killed. I do exactly. by proxy. I'm all over Bob's the place. Got a family. I'm all over the place right now, but I do have a is this racist moment for you. Oh no. Thanks to the good folks at Next Door, at least some, someone that lives in the Old Silk Stocking District. Guys, Where, we are that at? It's uh by the police station kind of. Oh, okay. 
Okay. Guys, we are still looking for Coonsy, the pet raccoon. Oh, you haven't seen Coonsy? No. Oh, you haven't? No. Are you being serious? Yes. Oh, my He's God. Coonsy is lost. He's been all over the news. Are you serious? Oh, yeah. Yes. They oh, got yeah. the news to cover. The news is actually doing stories about a raccoon 1, with a racist name. Yes. It's not racist. Is He's a this- raccoon. I from Idaho. Yeah, and I, they think he's in yeah. Kansas now. Oh no! <laughs> oh, he this doesn't. Is, how he doesn't hell, look wait, like wait, a normal how raccoon. How are they tracking a damn raccoon <laughs> to Kansas? <laughs> well, they think Coonsie went all the way to Kansas. Yes, this is. Oh, I mean, my sources. She have likes told me. potato chips, Cheetos, cat food, dog yep. food, and veggies. She oh, yeah. walks upright like a toddler. Yes. Are you? F- you kidding me? One thousand percent. Holy shit! How have I not seen this? It's an amazing yeah, story. It's a it's a story of perseverance. A ago. It's a yeah. raccoon it's a that only walks upright. <laughs> I'm looking for the picture now, Carrie, because your mind is going to be blown. Does Coonsy wear like outfits and stuff? Uh, no, he, it's a raccoon, and he has a brother that's with him. Uh, okay, I gotta. Uh, there's got to be more to the. Okay. Uh, rock. I okay, like- she walks upright like a toddler. If you see her, please send a message so I can get a hold of Heather. It's important that we bring this fur baby home where she belongs, especially for the holidays. Mr. George Simmons showed up to help Aiden the cat, who was stuck 40 foot feet in a tree on the third day out of the goodness of his heart and his love for Aiden. What the f*** are we doing here? Uh, so this guy brought, the, he brought his pet raccoon with him because he was coming down to help with the ice storm. He was yes. coming to help with the electricity. From, from Idaho? Yes. Yes. So he was like a lineman. Right. And he had a pet raccoon named Coonsie. Correct. That is now And lost. Carrie, when you see the size of this thing. Oh, I, this thing has got to be well taken care of. It is almost obnoxious. I'm looking for it right now. It's almost obnoxious to see how big this raccoon is. It's a unit. It's a unit. It's a big boy. It's a unit. Uh Josh, you Can have we talk about yes, yes. What I, I just love that Carrie. Eddie was like, Carrie. All, all these other questions going on. <laughs> we're, 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 t- we're talking about this raccoon, and Eddie Carrie's like, "Well, does it wear outfits?" And Eddie's like, "No, it's a raccoon." <laughs> like that's the line. That's where we're like, Look "No, that's too far." Like, oh my god, my god. I mean, it has its own Twitter page. Coonzy oh yeah, the raccoon SMC underscore oh, raccoonzy. This guy, this guy. Is still looking for the stamp thing. Up. Yeah, he's he's not going to give up. Like can, there are can multiple. Accept, can we accept this guy might not be? Oh, the, working you, on all cylinders. You got problems. You got problems if you're carrying around a raccoon with you from Idaho. It's almost like it's a I service just animal. I thought that there was someone in Norman that had a raccoon. I didn't know this was an international incident. Oh, this is a huge deal. In fact, <laughs> I would say outside of the Trajan Bridges thing, this is the number two story in Oklahoma right well, now. Well, what about Buki? Well, Buki's the number one clickbait story. Oh, yeah. Okay. But, yeah, they're they're looking for him. Channel 4's done a story. I know Peyton Yeager has. Bob, did you say Channel 5 did a story? Channel ball 5 ball, is yeah. too concerned Abby, with ball the ball. OSU ball boys to do a story on Coons. Yeah. Well, that's like it, it, that's the best part about all of this is that when when I I said last week I, I told they, somebody are the are, are the OSU ball boys out looking for Coonsie well, because they probably need to be they should be doing that that would be a nice way for them to say give a middle finger to Norman I think the best headline that would uh, well the headline that I put out this morning was what's more dangerous the West Bank or the North End Zone <laughs> well I just I appreciate that Josh fought with people for a good twenty four hours over it. I mean, th- th- there was some serious just, like, mental just, gymnastics going on, wasn't there? My my thing I is like a good war. It's been a while. Yeah, I guess you probably did. My whole thing is like I just can't deal with it. Like, if you say anything other than it was wrong to attack a ball boy, like if you want to start arguing semantics, like, well, why were they there? They, they, maybe they should have thought of it differently. Maybe they should have just waited. No, maybe they should have waited out of the stadium. No, maybe. Our fans just shouldn't have beat him up. How about that? That's the only way to look at this. Well, there's some people that don't think it happened. <laughs> Video <laughs> evidence proves that it did happen. And I love the guy. I don't know how many times you guys have watched Anthony West's video of it. I love the guy who kind of saunters up at the end and then starts yelling at the cop <laughs> and, like, sticking his finger in the cop's face. My favorite is a security guard, what, 
10 feet to the left of this. It's doing nothing. Looks over no less than three times <laughs> and is just like, nah, that's just some shit I'm not messing with. This late in this game. I want to go home. <laughs> like, he's just not going to be involved at all. he get on his phone, all. too, or something? He probably is <laughs> the one that's putting out the video on TikTok. Yeah, maybe that's what he was doing. I'd respect him if he's doing that, content creator. I mean, you have to respect the hustle of the OSU ball boy. He intercepted that pass. Oh, I mean, credit to him. He got out of the pile with the and ball. And then they beat the shit out of him because of I it. mean, it was said multiple times yesterday on Twitter and the message boards. He had more fight than the OSU football team. Yeah. But the problem was the guy that was attacking him was wearing a jersey, I'm pretty sure. I don't even think that was a jersey. I, I haven't, think it was a jersey. I haven't, del- I haven't delved into the... Uh, Oh, was he wearing a Kevin Durant jersey? He was wearing a number thirty-five jersey, but it was a it was maybe a, a Seth Luttrell. It was a Seth Luttrell throwback, probably, is what it was. Probably had pierced nipples then. People forget that. I don't let them. <laughs> or maybe was I it Russell think, Dennison thirty-five? Shout out Russell Dennison. I think DC would know who. Thirty. Oh, was he thirty-six? Yeah. Damn it, thirty-six. That would have been too mm-hmm. perfect. Jamar Mosey was thirty, I think. <sighs> Another good Damn. 35. Well, Nick Benito last year, I guess. Yeah, sure. Sure, <laughs> Nick Benito fan. Only likes but his freshman a, work, though. The fact that it's a jersey and a 35, like, you think you at least get a six. <sighs> you know. By the way, I did hear the funniest call yesterday. I'm sorry, Josh. No, a, no, you're fine. A kid called it. I had to go run errands, so I... Against my better judgment, I listen to talk radio while driving around, sports radio. A kid, this little cute kid called in to ask Jim Traber a question. And Traber asked, and he actually had a good point. He asked the kid who his favorite OU player was. It, but one of the questions he asked was, did he, did he think Kyler Murray could win the Super Bowl this year? <laughs> and then after he asked that and Traber did his spiel... The kid, he, Trey says, who's your favorite player? He said, Baker Mayfield. Oh, no. And I thought, you little racist kid. Why? You clearly should like. Maybe it was just an Kyler all-time Murray. troll attempt. Kyler Murray is your favorite quarterback if you're 10. He's a much better player in the NFL right now. I'm not shitting on Baker know. either. He probably went to Baker's camp a couple years ago. Maybe. Kyler comes back maybe and has a camp. he's not a racist open, little bastard. Maybe. Kyler comes back. I bet. I bet it, the kid's dad just put him up to it to troll Traber. <laughs> Seems like something that they would do on a on a Thanksgiving. I think break. someone that was going to call Traber show, not saying anything about your racial affiliations, probably going to be a Baker fan over a Kyler fan. Mm. I think that's out of my league. I don't know. I don't know. Speaking of deplorable Sooner fans, thirty-five jersey guy, you'll never see another game in your life. Well, I bet he in will. Person. I bet he will. He I mean, probably, they're not going to have pictures at every gate to like make sure that he can't come to games. Was using someone else's season ticket. So the question becomes: If you give your season tickets to an asshole, do you lose your season tickets? I don't. We can skip past all the bad stuff about Bedlam. You know what the good stuff about Bedlam was? Uh, you get forty one percent off a of dead soxy. Absolutely, so, they, I know they had to have been nervous. There was a chance they could have put up 60, nothing, 70 points. Yeah, <laughs> when it was twenty one nothing, I was like, and even when it was forty one, uh, Michael had contacted me from Dead Soxy afterwards, <laughs> and I was like, "Do you want us to promote this?" Like he's like, "Hell yeah!" And he's like, "Yeah, forty one percent. That's great. It's a great deal. Everybody get some socks. We love having new customers." Uh, so, yeah, if you go to deadsoxy.com, uh, put in the promo code BOOMER, 41%, you can think Oklahoma, 41% off of your Dead Soxy order. So if you're thinking about a good Christmas gift uh, for the man in your life or maybe just your son, uh, your husband, whatever, uh, go to deadsoxy.com. Great socks. You can get the uh, crimson and, and cream color wave, way wave, whatever you want to, whichever way you want to go there. Uh, or just some great looking socks that, you know, really high quality, uh, as good as anything you'll find out there. Great packaging. So it's a great gift to give. Uh, but yeah, 41% off. Great deal. I think it'd be a great Bedlam idea. What you do is you buy yourself a pair yeah. and then you buy a player on the team, a pair, <laughs> and then you contact OU compliance, say that you want to send them to the player. And I bet they would, 
be more than happy to get you in contact with him. I will just say, try that on for size. See what happens. <laughs> and make sure that you tag me on Twitter when you do it, because I want to see that happen. <laughs> you, well, but you, when you contact compliance, now. you want to be very clear that this is as a reward for their great performance on Saturday night. You're thanking them with those free socks, and I think that's got to be made very clear. I think, I think we should send a pair of socks to Buki. I, th- I think that'd be great. Like There you go. Because instead, you weren't able to congratulate it's somebody on the... A lot of love. You weren't able to congratulate somebody on the Zoom call today like some. So you can <laughs> congratulate them like this. <laughs> oh, God. I think it'd be a good idea. I think it all. this I is did, all coming I, together. I did tell Isaiah Thomas happy Thanksgiving. That was pretty homery of me. I think that's within the spirit of the holiday. It's part of the holiday season. I think there's going to be a lot more... Uh, happy Thanksgiving, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, whatever, over the next month because it's better than saying something else. Everybody's been so mean to each other over the last eight months. Well, and Carrie, it makes up for the fact that you won't be able to take all the gift baskets by the guys' houses <laughs> on Thanksgiving. That's true. So that's true. You know, this, that's or are they going to be is, full of fireworks? For what, what kind of gift box? <laughs> Uh, just, or give you know, rides I, to the I airport. Assume, what, was it? Is it Tiff's treats? What, what, what's the What's the one? Isn't that something like that? Hey, if somebody's sending out Tiff's treats, make sure that my name's on that bag, or at least oh, coming to my okay. place. I that, was that place is awesome. Mm-hmm. I think I know that place, and it is awesome. Down in Dallas. Yeah. Yeah, it's I unbelievable. I, I want to say I've been here. But I could be wrong. But one of the things Lincoln did this week was uh, he. Because nobody else has done it or tried to do it. He basically defended, not defended Buki for what he did, but defended Buki for why he p- continues to play. Which, that's the old take, which is he should never, shut that up, uh, he should never be on the field again. And, and, and the fact that Lincoln Riley plays him is an affront to football. Which that's an that's a hardcore olds take. It's like I don't understand how. I mean, I, I get that people can get mad at Buki. It's and right I up there with a lot of don't give people water at practice. Honestly. Well, I mean, as that as I talked about, that was something I was raised on. You know, he was he was raised to hate trainers, and I I was very anti water boy in my house. That was that was our real battle cry. So, uh. But like Buki played well, people people just want to lose track of that or something like they don't want to. People conveniently think forget that they scored a wide open touchdown after he got yanked out of the game. Like I don't uh, know that it was his you know the fault of the person who came in for him, mm-hmm. but clearly the defense just let a guy run wide open into the end zone and catch a touchdown pass. Yep. Uh. I don't, like I said, it, it, and I've been tough on him, and I said some. I, I said it during the game. Like you just can't. The thing I won't take anymore is the he's such a smart player. We need him on the field. He's one of our leaders. Leaders don't continue to put you in shitty spots over and over and over again. He does that. Don't so don't give me that crap. But at the same time, you can't be like, well, that's who. That's all he is. No, he's a good player. He he plays well. For the vast majority of the time, but people only ever want to talk about his mistakes because it feeds the narrative he's short and small and can't be any good. And Bob, today, you know, Lincoln basically, the you know, his defense of Buki was basically he's behind kind of the, the heart and soul of our team yep. behind the scenes. For sure, you know, spending time in the film room with all the younger guys. I mean, you hear Trey Brown, Isaiah Thomas. I mean, it it. Here's what I'll say. It felt like it didn't take long for those guys to come up to an answer to what Buki means to the team. And to me, that says it's genuine. Like, they weren't, like, hemming and hawing and trying to put together what he, who he is. They knew right off the bat, as soon as the question was asked, exactly why Buki's one of their brothers and why they love and respect him so much. Can I say something controversial? Sure. It was a pretty quick flag, wasn't it? Like he didn't really do a whole lot. Well, I mean, the ref, I, the ref told him to stop. 
The, yeah, the ref told him to stop, and then as he place. was walking away, he pointed back at him. Yeah, and then he and then he kept walking away, and then he put his hand up again and did the yapping signal. Yeah, all right. It's just like it's one of those things. Like as you're watching it happen, you're like he. It's like almost watching somebody get a technical in basketball. It's like, all right, turn around, turn around, turn around, turn around. Oh no, he he's going back. He's going. He can't oh, help himself. He just yeah. couldn't. Like just there's so many of those. Those moments, and I, didn't he have one against Texas too? That was just like TCU or TCU. TCU. But they called it on the TCU. Oh, that's right, that's right. Yeah, like goddamn. And then, but then you have like Ronnie Perkins after he uh, the first play of the game, or no, after the Spencer Sanders sack, like throws the ball at the OSU sidelines. Yeah, and I nobody he does anything. I was like, God dang. That's what in a, as a single incident, Bucci sure, didn't stand out, but as that whole first half. Something was coming to a head. It almost did at halftime. And let's face it, it goes the way they were positioned. This isn't just about the the Bedlam game. This goes back to LSU last year too. No, it does. And oh, yeah. you can't. There's there is no defense of some of the stuff that Buki's done, both on the field through play, on the field through some of his actions. Like, but I will say, like, you know, I I think everybody said it. He will sit in there and answer every question and is probably one of the most mature guys in the interview room. But that doesn't count for anything. That I mean, fans don't care about that shit, and nor should they. I think I think what it is is like the, there's a weird relationship between OU fans and anything defense that it's a it's a uh what do they call that? dysfunctional relationship that neither side really knows how to get along with each other yeah. like it's just there's so many things that have happened in the past it's kind of like a bad marriage it's like you know you forget to pick up eggs at the store and you come back and your wife instead of just being mad at you she, you know she says well you f-ed my sister back in in high school yeah we just like, hope that we don't come home one day and keith morrison's standing on the doorstep because it's a murder suicide inside <laughs> But anytime anything happens, everybody has really long memories, and they you know, throw it right back in your face. I mean, fortu- he goes back to he's supposed to be the savior of the defense. No, you're right, Bob. The Absolutely, the fact that he was just a five uh, star. Yeah. Army. I mean, intercepting tr- Trevor guy. Lawrence first series of the game saves Kerry Cooks' job, and like nothing ever happened. Well, guys, I mean, think about... The like, fact think that he saved Kerry Cook's job is probably his number one thing that he's ever accomplished. I don't think that's one a good thing. One of the few guys that I think Kerry Cook's ever really battled for, like really fought to get Buki. Yep. Uh, I, you know, I, I, I talked to plenty of people. But he only had to get rid of... He only had to beat out Nebraska. <laughs> well, Clemson... He, I know he there were other Clemson, teams, like, but I mean, yeah. the fact that he committed to Nebraska kind of made you say, like... This kid's a little yes. different. Yep. Well, I mean, that was when, you know, Mike was going to turn that whole thing around. Mike, uh, uh, God, what's his last name? Mike Riley. Mike Riley. Oh, yeah. Was going to turn that Oregon whole thing State around. Coach. Yep. But uh, He's done better yeah. than Scott Frost did. But, I mean, like, compare his career to Justin Broyles. I, how, how is it that Justin is, like, He's okay. They're kind of fine with him. Like, you don't want him out there on the field that much. I mean, as, as, when you talk to fans. But there's not like that anger. Like, there's anger towards Buki. Like, really yeah. hostile. And, again, most of the time, Buki's playing pretty good football. It may not be dominant. And you can certainly say over the course of, like, the Iowa State game, he's had moments that were really bad. I mean, games that were really bad. But most players do. There's just not that same anger and hostility towards most of them as there is Buki, and I think it's just because he's not the guy they wanted him to be. Right. And defensive back, you always see the error. Mm -hmm. You don't have to know anything about football to know when a defensive back has made an error. I think it's easy to make assumptions about Buki based on the way he carries himself, that he's Instagram famous, that he had the sledgehammer. That he seems to... I think people just assume this is a kid that always puts the cart before the horse. Like, he doesn't he doesn't earn anything. He's just been given a lot of stuff, and he he kind of... I mean, that's that's just what I, I... I don't see it that way. I'm just saying I could see how 
kind of general olds would would view Buki. I think that's I, fair. I mean, I think that's absolutely fair because I remember the first time I met him coming in. I I don't want to say like he was given anything. I mean, because he's not like a kid that came from some easy background or anything. He's he's got some history, but you kind of thought, oh, he's a five star kid. He's you know he's he's like you said, big on social media. He's got the wild hair. Like like oh, he's just going to be this kind of diva. I didn't get that at all from Buki. Like he was oh, he incredibly is, nice and gracious with my time. He and, might be the like, best he, player on the team to talk to. He's fantastic yeah. to interview. Like I think if fans met him, it would change their opinion because I think they have an expectation of who he is, and that's nothing like what he really is like. He might not be a football player, but he's. I truly believe he's going to make he'll he'll make something out of himself, and it may be as a motivational speaker. I mean, he might be like uh, George Clooney's backpack or whatever up in the air. Like he, he's going to be successful. I really believe that because as a person, he, it's weird to say this. He does get it (laughs) off the field. I just don't know. He's just got that weird ass, you know, switch that flips on the field that doesn't match up with who you know him to be off the field. He's truly Not one of the more polari- polarizing figures that has come through here in a long time. I mean, I, I truly think yeah. that. Of all the guys that have come come through here, he's a very interesting figure. And, like, I think, like, Curtis Bolton would shoot off at the mouth all the time, say whatever he wanted to say. Yeah. And people liked him more. But Yeah, but let's be honest. Like, the defenses that Curtis Bolton were on sucked. And I think that, like, it's it's almost become a bigger story in that, like, Buki is on a, one of the, uh, you know, 11 guys out there that is on a defense that I think we can officially say is kind of back. Yeah. Like, th- that should be the story. The short the story should be the last four or five games in which, you know, he's been on the field to help. They're pretty damn good, I think. It's almost like everybody else has disappeared and he's the only one that stands out because of the bad stuff. Sure. But, like, you don't notice Woody Washington. You really only notice Trey Brown because he's on the best player on the other team and he's getting penalties for holding. Well, alleged penalties. I I said this after the game, guys, and I'd be happy to just kind of go, delve into Bob and Josh's thoughts just on the game because uh, Eddie and I just did the podcast because it was so late and... Bob didn't finish writing until about 1.30 or God, it was probably later than that. Um, but, like, I, I don't notice Delarian Turner yell that much, and I don't think that's a good thing, but I did rewatch the game, and he's, he's up at the line of scrimmage when he has to be. I mean, he seems to be doing the right things. Pat Fields had that bogus pass interference call him at, at, at the end of the game, and he's, he's played well. I mean, he's living up to at least being a captain. So... I mean, Buki's really the only... I mean, Trey Norwood's playing really well. Like, there's really not a whole lot to complain about on the defense. Agreed. I mean, like, even the guys that aren't superstars, like you said, Pat Fields, Trey Norwood, you're getting good, solid efforts from those guys. They're not playing football that's going to beat you. And the guys that are... Hell, you're adding to it with DJ Graham. I mean, you're getting freshmen that step up and are playing well when they come in. Well... And DJ Graham's a great example. DJ Graham should have gotten beaten for a touchdown in that game. If, if Illingworth on yeah, target, yeah. Dylan yep. Stoner got behind him. That should have been Stoner a touchdown. Was there. Yep. Nobody talks about that because that doesn't fit like DJ Graham's an emerging star. So we don't talk about that side of it. But Buki isn't in perfect position on a three yard slant and people act like he's, you know, like he's burned their entire house down. Like it's. It's just one of these things where, like I said, it, you've got to fit these storylines all the time. But, yeah, I agree. I mean, like, and I, I've said it, you know, in some of the idiot breakdown I've got going, is I feel like, guys, and, you know, you, you could speak to it better than me because you're talking to these guys, but it feels like the confidence that is starting to come from that defensive line and how dominant it is becoming is starting to feed the rest of that defense. Now, and some of it is – completely relatable you know the the dbs right. don't have to cover as long because the defensive line's on them but i also think it's just a level of play is being raised guys are expecting more out of each other and i think everybody's getting accustomed to you know if i don't make a play he's gonna make a play it's literally a change in culture is what we've seen 
And it's fascinating that it's happened right in front of us over the last year and a half. You know, there's been obviously some bad spots of it, but you're completely right, Josh. I think there is like a accountability almost like we don't suck anymore. And some of the guys are guys that have been around for a while. Ronnie Perkins just flat out came and said, came out and said, we think we're the best defense in, in the Big 12. I'm glad that Isaiah Thomas could confirm that today, too. <laughs> I thought he was going to say we're the fifth best defense, but. I've, I've done the numbers. <laughs> we're only number four. What, yeah, what if he would have said, well, West Virginia's the best, tech, you know, statistically. Been better for the clickbait. It, it, it It's pretty insane, though, just as far as, like, there is a different mentality down there. And maybe it's maybe it carries over and it comes through Zoom a little bit, I guess, better because it's like, look at what we've done over the last couple weeks. But there is something that I, it feels more real, I guess, is, is probably the best way to say it. Well, it was interesting today because, you know, uh, or, you know, when Lincoln Riley spoke this week, because he, he basically you could tell he's fighting against overconfidence. He's fighting against this team feeling themselves a little too much. Now that they've won Bedlam handily and he knows they're going in to a tough game at West Virginia, I think he knows. Like if you go and you you don't play your best, you could lose this game, which is absolutely the way to approach it. But he's not letting anybody get the big head right now. At least he's attempting to. They make enough to. errors. They make enough errors where they shouldn't. You think of the second and third quarter Bedlam. Will anyone ever watch those again? Those are oh, it's awful. Soul sucking. <laughs> Unless you're a punter and you want to see that Reeves Munchow boomer again, you guys are real assholes. You're just rubbing it in that I'm going. I'm literally in the fourth quarter right now. Like I'm going through. This. Well, it gets good in the fourth quarter. Yeah, the fourth yeah. quarter is at least good. I've, second I've, and third. I just slogged through the second and third though. <laughs> I didn't skip the middle. Dicks. Well, that's the price you pay. <laughs> you got paid this month. You're good. I did. Indeed. Uh, no, but overall, Bob and Josh, just let's talk about the offense. Kind of your impressions there. Obviously, Ramondre Stevenson. What you're watching, Josh, in the fourth quarter. You know, I don't. I don't know if Josh made it through the game Saturday night. We could tell you were teetering. You were kind of wanting to fight, <laughs> but you were. You were. Yeah, I know you had a lot of moving, so it might have been warranted. But Saturday was. It wasn't bad. It was it was a good thing the game wasn't played on Friday or especially Thursday. Thursday there could have been a Twitter homicide. Like I, it would have been bad. Um, I sent you guys that picture of our house just in chaos, and it's not perfect by any stretch. There's probably still oh ten, twelve boxes kind of in various places around the house, but for the most part, it's a house. So yeah, Saturday was was interesting for sure. But I definitely finished it. Um, I won't lie. Part of take getting the report uh, the report card out so late was that I was like, God, I'm tired, and I really had tried. I was like, I'm going to stay up and I'm going to do the post game with them. I'm going to do, and then I was like, Nope, <laughs> that's just not happening. Nope, not going to happen. So, uh, but yeah, now you know, watching the offense. I mean, the stuff that stood out to me was, I feel like you're starting to see. Um, better work all around outside. You know, we've talked about the playmakers emerging, but now, like, you're starting to see Drake Stoops pick up blocks that he was missing early in the season. You know, I think that's why you're starting to get some longer runs. You know, Ramondre Stevenson, as Bob said, um, uh, I I think during the game, it was OU's first 30-yard run of the season. And, you know, so you're starting to see these things starting to come together where it's it's just better better execution all the way around. And I – Guys, you know, you said it during the postgame pod, guys, but I thought Spencer Rattler, it's kind of been overlooked. I thought he played a great game. He did. He played the exact game they needed him to and didn't get aggressive with the ball, didn't try to do too much, took what was there, and did it without arguably his favorite target, Austin Stogner, on the field. Yeah, he's just been able to adjust without Stogner, without Hazelwood. He just – He's got a better feel of who he can trust in a certain moment, and he's just making all the right calls. And, and you, you look at like no one has, you know, six or seven catches. He just spreads the wealth com- just to everybody, and it feels weird because we're coming off of Marquise Brown and C.D. Lamb and D.D. Westbrook, 
to kind of see this all combined type of effort. But that's really what this season has has been about. And you figure it's only going to make Rat uh, going to make uh, Rattler better in 2021. But he's done a great job of just adjusting the last four or five weeks of just real of, of knowing who he needs to, to go to at certain times. And you know, guys, I think the the one thing about the offense that 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 makes me realize how much better it's playing is I really felt like that was pinnacle Lincoln Riley, Baker Mayfield, Kyler Murray area era, uh, Lincoln Riley as an offensive coordinator, and that's I think that's the first time I felt like some of that magic dust that he sprinkles. In a long, long time. I mean, how open was everything that they tried? Yeah. Yep. It felt like it even felt that like last Wee's touchdown. I mean, yeah, like it's just like it, it's just like the OSU defense just finally broke. And it, it just felt like I mean, they could do anything he dialed up. It was like, okay, you got an option there, take it. Like that, Mikey Henderson was wide open the entire day. I don't know how they never adjusted to that. He really it's, screwed them up, and they showed it a lot, Josh. And you've seen a lot the the GT counter, the GT power stuff, like yeah. that totally screwed them up, and they never figured it out. Well, it, you could tell in the first half that OSU was just that's not going to beat us. We're not going to let that play beat us, and they were so focused on it. And you could tell Riley went in at halftime and said, "Okay, we're going to run some counter off of this stuff. We're going to do some different things." Uh, counter is the wrong word to use, but I mean, we're going to we're going to use that as a dummy, you yeah. know, like that. That's you, you look that way. Rattler broke a couple of runs specifically built on they were reading Marquise Hayes and Tyrese Robinson. All those linebackers flowed that way, and they ran that little quick option to Ramondre Stevenson to the left side. I think late in the third quarter, maybe early in the fourth. But either way, I mean, they were using that as, okay, if you want to do that, that's fine. Here's what we're going to do. And I felt like once that happened, Oklahoma State never got off their heels. They just couldn't, you know, like, okay, we're going to deal with that and this. And that's just hard to do when you're when you're tired and exhausted. And I mean, th- that was the thing. I thought Oklahoma State's defense played a pretty respectable game with the exception of the first six minutes, they were just beat. I mean, they, they were on the field way, way too long against a really good offense. Stevenson was 12 carries for 21 yards in the first half. Yeah. But OU kept going with it, and then they wore down. And, I mean, 26 for one for 141. So it looks like they just dominated. But that was just mostly late third and the fourth quarter was just a clinic. It felt towards the end of the third quarter is like they're they're getting ready to pop one. It felt like it was getting close, and then well, obviously yeah. the first couple of plays of the fourth quarter. I mean, it was just downhill after that. That's kind of when Ramondre started going yeah, for like sure. Eight yards, six yards, eleven yards, uh, and then as soon as Mike Gundy punted on that fourth down, it was like they were done. I want to real quick, Josh, and I know this. Everybody wants to hear us talk about OU, but just. What did you think of the Mike Gundy game plan, both of you? I, uh, I, and it's weird because I feel the same as you guys do. I'm doing the Monday Morning Idiot, which is obviously an Oklahoma-based story where I'm watching what OU does, but I can't stop commenting on something. It's just some of the things I'm seeing. Yeah, it's just yep. fascinating. He's got all this lateral action, and they're running sideline to sideline, and you're like, what? You've got. You've got a great tight end. Why are you not using him to go right at the the guys that there's tape of struggling with exactly this kind of player? Instead, you're throwing out in the flats to Brennan Presley or running wide on that third down with Chuba Hubbard. Like you're playing right to Oklahoma strengths. They want to slant you to death and they want to run they want to run to space. Like that's what they're built on. And you're gonna play this game? I I it it just didn't it didn't make any sense, especially for a guy that had two weeks to come up with whatever he wanted to do. I just think something's got to be wrong with Chuba. There's no, there's no way he's healthy, right? Well, they showed it during the game, um, and Holly Rowe basically said it right as the game started that he wasn't 100, percent which kind of contradicted what they had tweeted out right before the game. And then there was a play, and I can't remember what quarter it was in, but. Chuba Hubbard got tackled like from the side and his his foot got caught underneath his body as he was going down and kind of bended awkwardly and like he it was it was before halftime 
And it then, was that it was that pass they threw wide to him when Pat Fields hit him. The ball kind of skipped to him. I know exactly what you're talking okay. about. And right, then yeah. he hobbled around and he didn't come out after or he was going to try and come out after halftime and cuz Holly Rowe was on the OSU sideline the whole time and she was like he's told the coaches he thinks he can go and then I don't it, it was a while before he came back in again. So he yeah, he's he was pretty banged up. But I mean the the thing that it still remains baffling to me, even after we've heard Mike Gundy decide it, is just just sticking with Illingworth as long as he did, even when he was seven of twenty one for like seventy one yards or whatever. Like there was a point, and I remember on the rewatch of the game, I was like, okay, this is where he should have put Spencer Sanders back, and it was just after halftime, uh, and it was like, I think that touchdown after Buki probably was a little bit of fool's gold for Mike Gundy. Because when he scored that touchdown, he was like, okay, let's keep him in there and we're going to get some more of these wide open busts in the secondary because that's always what happens when we play Oklahoma. And it just never materialized. If I would have told if I would have told you guys at the beginning of the season that OU was going to hold OSU to 15 of 40 passing, I would have, hell, even after the Kansas State or Iowa State games, I would have loved to have heard what everybody would have said. I would have said you're full of shit, Eddie. Oh, I hear that a lot. Yeah. I, mean, I would have I, said, I why are you giving me... be jarring for you. I would say, why are you giving me such a random stat three months out? I could have been a soothsayer. <laughs> and, that would have, that, just, and that moment was, could have been when the Church of Eddie began. It still could be. Hmm. I've always wanted to start a cult. Take a little bit <laughs> about, of everything from all the greats. What about just a religion? I'll do that too. It wouldn't be a cult. A cult's that, a negative thing. Well, there's is, there's a negative connotation People around will it. Follow but, a religion. Well, maybe think People about it. Follow a cult. Yeah, maybe think about it. Take a little something from all the greats. Take a little something from Trump. Take well, a little something from. It's your opinion. <laughs> Maybe take a little bit from David Koresh, take a little bit from the people out in the West Coast. What was the Manson family? Don't forget the Jonestown massacres. Oh, yeah, all the good people. Drink all the good Kool-Aid. There, what, what is the fact? Like, that, that should be a red flag to anyone. Like, somebody that really likes Kool-Aid, he might be in a cult. <laughs> that's probably true. But that's where drinking the Kool-Aid came from. I don't think people were drinking Kool-Aid before then. I can't say that I'm up to date on the Kool Aid history. I think that's his, the, the only of mass murder by Kool Aid event that we've ever seen. Hmm. Shouldn't be the last. <laughs> okay. Um, I tell you what, we have not. We didn't talk any recruiting last weekend, Bob. Let's get into the latest there, uh, and I'll let you kind of just run the ship here. But um, things that you guys have been. Looking at lately offers that have gone out, um, buzz that's that's out there. Let's 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 hop to it. Chop chop. All right, Josh. First, I'm gonna go with who me and Eddie saw, and we finally saw a good performance. Finally, finally got got one under our uh, belt. Uh, Jordan Mukes and Choctaw able to beat Putnam North twenty to seven, advance to the. Who they beat again, Bob? On... <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> on, on... <laughs> The Panthers. It's still a great day to oh, be Panthers. Oh, that's right. right. right that's Eddie. right. PC North, I believe, right? That's what you're talking about. Is West but. even still a school? <laughs> <laughs> Is it even still standing over there? <laughs> you pay, Sorry, you did. You Sorry. did kind of pay for that performance, though, because what else was happening while you were watching Jordan Mukes? Oh, Tylen Shetron, yeah, obviously yeah. going off. I mean, it's just yeah. it's like clockwork. And I fully expect like while clockwork. Josh goes and sees Kamar this weekend, he'll have seven thousand yards. Eddie's been a little bit of a jinx. That's been awful. It is not been the been cooler a year for you, buddy. Yeah, that's why two, two or three pass breakups by Mukes. That's enough for us to classify that as a win because that's not what we've had throughout this entire season. But you know, you usually, usually play safety. He goes at corner, goes against you know, Wonkwo of Putnam North the entire game and shuts him down. I mean, that was really impressive to see. And, you know, we always talk about his potential and how raw he is. That felt more like production. And that, I've had a lot of Choctaw people say that's the best game that he's played. And 
makes a lot of sense, but that that's what you build on. That's what you want is during the playoffs, be playing at your best. I don't know how much of a chance you really have against still against uh, Stillwater Saturday, but it, that was the type of performance I've needed to see since I've had question marks about Mukes throughout this entire season. Now, Josh, uh, your schedule, I know you said you've got, you've got some good stuff coming up, but, uh, trying to think the last place you visited. I want to go back to the Guild, the Gilbert offer by LSU, Josh. Is this yeah. a game? Is, is, is it done? Is, is that it? No, and there's a few reasons why. Normally, I would say yes. I mean, it's just flat out LSU, you know. Like, this isn't – guys, like, the distance between his Jordan Gilbert's high school and LSU – makes, like, Norman North and OU look like cross-state. I mean, like, Lab is, like, across the street from LSU. Like, it's it's right there. So, th- to say there's a connection between that high school and the university is just overwhelmingly the case. But what gets interesting is LSU has done pretty well recruiting uh, at safety. They're, they're in good shape the last couple years. Obviously, you know, they, they recruit a lot of their in-state talent. I was a little surprised this offer happened, but what I can gather is this was kind of a LSU saying, you know, maybe we're going to want to push for you in January. Like they're recruiting him, they're active, but I don't think they want to. I don't think they want him to decide anytime soon. So I think this was that. Well, if we're going to want to get in on him, we're going to have to make that claim. You know that we were there well before his decision to you know commit comes. So they're trying to lay the groundwork more than anything, in my opinion, to see what happens down the road. But I don't think he's a guy they're ready to take right now. So I still think Oklahoma is a pretty good bet here. I still think that's probably what happens. But if LSU goes full guns, it's it's over. I mean, I, just, I don't want anybody to have any illusions. But he could fall into Oklahoma's lap, which is, it sounds terrible and all that sort of thing. But, I mean, there are multiple guys on OU's roster that are really good players that that could be said of. So, you know, don't lose heart in that. That's that's fine. It's just the way that goes sometimes. So, um, you know, like I said, I, I like where OU is. I think they've done a good job with him. I've heard nothing that says OU is willing to give up or they think they're out of the race or anything like that. I think it's just a matter of to what degree LSU is going to recruit him. And we didn't have a Sooner Summit 2 last weekend, but we did have a couple guys – Come in for their own visits. Remington Strickland, Bryce Foster back in Norman. Is this a big deal in the grand scheme of things? Will this at all kind of sway one or the other toward leaning toward the the, the Sooners when the signing period begins next uh, next month? Well, the Bryce Foster visit kind of reads into one of my golden rules of recruiting. Anytime a kid is trying to secretly make a visit it says something like it, it says I don't either. I don't want the heat on me for making this trip. I don't want to do anything like I just, he doesn't, I'm not it's kind of like cheating on your wife you. a little bit. Yeah. Like if there's nothing to hide, why are you hiding? So like, it's it, it just, it's a funny kind of way to look at it. Now I'm, I'm not like, again, A and M and OU. I think it's a dead heat. I think it's really close, but to me, there's some out there that like, Oh, well, the A&M is playing good. Surely he's going A&M. Guys, as a guy who has to make that Oklahoma trip a lot, you don't make that drive if you don't have to or if there's not a real good reason to do so. And for him to make that trip up there, that tells me Oklahoma is, is as in good a shape as anybody in this recruitment. Now, well, I, I, there's no lying. I mean, it worked out really nicely for Oklahoma. They had a big game on a weekend in which A&M got hit by COVID. He's probably not going to go to Oregon. Texas got hit by COVID. I mean, like, there's all these reasons, and it just worked out really, really well for Oklahoma. So that's part of it. But he didn't have to go anywhere. But like I said, that's probably the last visit he'll probably get to take because he's going to be going through his own playoffs here very shortly with a Katie Taylor team that is expected to go several rounds deep. So this is, um, I think it's a good sign for Oklahoma. I think it, it tells you where OU is with him. The other one is a little more interesting. Remington, uh, not more interesting, but it's just a little bit different. Remington Strickland, he made no chance to hide it. He wore his OU shirt to the game. 
he was he was out there taking pictures. He was very much into it's a it. Good looking kid. Talking to him, he is impressive. There's no doubt about it. Um, he is a guy that uh, Oklahoma likes as a center, and I you know talking to him afterward. He really talked about just watching Creed Humphrey and how much he likes his game and really just, you know, almost kind of every snap I can learn something from the way he does things. So I think there is a real connection there. And, again, another guy that's an A&M legacy. He's got family that went to A&M. There's a, I, I think that's the two schools it's going to come down to, get to in his situation as well. But in both cases, A&M and Josh Henson just don't have the track record of offensive linemen that Oklahoma does under Bill Bedenboe and don't have the national awards and all these all these things. So it's uh, you know it's kind of a question of you know what's going to win out there. Uh, Oklahoma could win both. Oklahoma could win neither. They could split. I mean, it could go a lot of different ways. But I like I said, the fact that A and M made that offer and Strickland still came up to take that trip. I think it says a lot. I think Oklahoma is very legitimate. He's got a long relationship with Bill Bedenboe. So, like I said, it, it, we'll see what actually ends up happening, but I, I think Oklahoma is still very much right in the thick with both of those guys. I have two thoughts. What a badass move it would be to have a center named Remington. Oh, oh yeah, Remington? he should legally change. He should change the spelling of his first name. Like, is it probably. not the same as the Remington Award? No, it's all his right. is like Remington, Remington, like the razor. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And the other thing is. If Bryce Foster does pick A and M, we should tell these people on next door that we saw him pick up Coonsy and take him back home with him. I think you should say that anyways. Throw him off the scent. <laughs> I want them to find Coonsy. In the back of my mind, I was kind of hoping that a fraternity has him in the house somewhere. Taught it to drink beer. Yeah, like instead of a house dog, they have a house raccoon. That'd be kind of cool. That would be, be so twenty twenty. That'd be awesome. <laughs> then they all get rabies. <laughs> I bet he doesn't have rabies. You know that that all raccoon right. gets his shots. <laughs> oh, there's hey, no uh, doubt. Go ahead, uh, Josh. Uh, you're going to the game that's sort of been circled for a while. Jordan Hudson versus Kamar Wheaton. What What are you excited about seeing Saturday? <laughs> This is kind of like the Mario Williams game. It has been a long road to get here. When I finally got my approval to cover the game, I was kind of excited about it. So this was initially supposed to be this coming Friday. Got your name and on then that when everything started happening, list, didn't you? Yeah, you know, hey, you, you got you to gotta check the record sometimes. Got to be careful. Um, so this was supposed to be Friday, and then everything started getting moved around in Garland ISD, so they kicked it forward to two weeks ago, and I was – at Luther Burden, so I couldn't go. I was already committed to that one. Well, then it ends up that it, they still got hit with COVID again. So, in interest of skipping that for a Friday night, you know, COVID problem, they're now playing on Saturday two weeks later. So they've cleared that hurdle. Um, but yeah, get to see OU's 2022 wide receiver commitment, Jordan Hudson uh, for Garland High, and then for Lakeview Centennial, obviously five star running back Kamar Wheaton. So Wheaton I've seen before. This will be my first chance to see Jordan Hudson up close. Uh, Hudson seems to be rounding into form. Went for almost 200 yards last Friday night. Now maybe, you know, I can be the one to douse those flames and he has a rather pedestrian night. But I am hopeful that I can see Kamar Wheaton on a better performance than the last time I saw him. He really, really struggled against the same name in Forest team that Eddie saw him against earlier this year, and he struggled similarly. So he had a big game here recently, so I'm kind of hoping maybe he's hitting his stride. But this is, like I said, it's getting down to time with Kamar Wheaton. Oklahoma really needs to know what he's going to do because if he's not coming to Oklahoma, they have got to quickly pivot and figure out what they're going to do at running back, whether it's going into the transfer portal, whether it's finding a secondary option, which is possible. But I haven't heard a lot of names that say, okay, if, if usually – if it's a situation like this where it's one or bust, you know who the backup option is going to be. You know if they miss out on that one guy they really want, you know where the next step is. I've not heard anything like that. So it's going to be really interesting to follow if we can figure out what Oklahoma's next move would be if they don't land Kamar Wheaton. But I I still think Oklahoma's the smart bet there. I still think that's what's going to end up happening. But it's 
I mean, it's it's a feeling. It's not anything I would say I know because with Kamar Wheaton, you can't know anything. Now, I think the only thing else that's lingering out there is Savion Bird finally announced that he will make his decision on signing day, December 6, uh, 16th. We kind of thought maybe you might commit after the Sooner Summit, but now it's been three months since, and is there going to be a spot for him? And how 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 do you think things are, sh- are uh, shaking out here? There has been some question. I mean, does he fit into Oklahoma's numbers? You know, say they were to get Remington Strickland, say they were going to get Bryce Foster, say they get Tristan Lee, uh, do they really take a fifth offensive lineman? And I don't know how you say no to Savion Bird. Now, he's raw. He's a guy that's going to need a couple years. He played some defensive line for Duncanville last year. He's come back to the offensive line this year. You're talking about a six foot five, six foot six guy that can really move his feet and – is that a program that's going to just keep producing Division One player after Division One player, including a couple of young guys you've already offered along the offensive and defensive lines? I would think there's no way you could say no to him. I, I, I just I don't believe that. Maybe OU will prove me wrong, but I just I don't see any way you can walk away from a guy like that at a program like that. And you know, you you talk about you land him and Lee. You're set at tackle for the next three or four years once you know those guys come of age and are ready to go. So we'll have to see. Now, I will say, unlike at um, uh, excuse me, uh, at running back, where I was just talking about where I don't really know backup options, at tackle, there are some things in place, but I think that has more to do with Tristan Lee. So that's why I kind of struggle to believe that Bird is not going to have a spot because – if they miss out on Lee, I've heard talk of some other places they may go. So I, I, I don't – like I said, why wouldn't Bird have a spot if, if, if Lee's backup has a spot? But, we'll, you know, we'll see what happens. But I, I like where OU is with Bird. I really like where OU is with Tristan Lee. If they can close on even those two, I think you can live with Strickland and Foster. I mean, I, don't get me wrong. You want to get those guys. But OU has bodies on the interior. It's tackle – where they really need to hit some home runs, and those two are two of the best in the country. Josh, you you kind of spoke about it on the uh, message board. I think it was this afternoon even. Could you speak to just kind of the weirdness? And, Bob, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this as well, just as far as – and it's not anything breaking news as far as we are a month inside of early signing period, and there is so much uncertainty about how the – 21 classes going to finish and not so much as as much as like the players uh, and who's going to sign as much as it is just everything that has gone into basically this 2021 class being f***ed over by the NCAA well that's a dynamite lead in I love that thank you um, <laughs> I, but, uh, you know, I do and, think it's no I couldn't agree more I just think it's notable as far as like you know somebody was asking you know like where's all the recruiting stuff and it's there's just it's so weird right now it, well, I mean, because, guys, you think about the things we're usually talking about right now. It's guys taking official visits. It's guys, like we talked about with Bryce Foster, sneaking out to take visits when they're committed to other schools. It's it's the coaches going to see some senior they really like or going to see the sophomore quarterback that Lincoln Riley, you know, it may be his next quarterback offer. You know, there's all these things that are usually storylines right now, and you don't get any of them because it's just Zoom chats. I mean, like, yeah. you know. Carrie, virtual if, visits. If Carrie wants to, yeah, if Carrie wants to weigh in on the love of a Zoom chat and how much it can mean to you, um, that's certainly you know I can leave the floor for him. But it well, is, you're not it's taking a Zoom things. chat with a bunch of other idiots recruited that are recruits, so it's fine. Well, I mean, you know, just because they're recruits doesn't make them not idiots. But I, I get what you're saying. Um, but no, you know, it, it's it's one of those things where it's just like a lot of the normal content that fills this time of year is not there. So you're getting a lot of, well, what I'm hearing, what I'm thinking, what I'm expecting. But it's not it's not tangible. It's not the normal stuff that we have where, hey, I, I you know, I've heard, you know, a good example from years ago. I'm hearing Jazz Reynolds snuck up to Oregon for an official visit this weekend. Okay, that's news. And, like, you kind of chase that and you've got that to talk about. That would be happening right now. Mario Williams would be taking visits right now. There are several guys that would be – out doing some things and they might Kelvin Gilliam would be visiting Notre Dame right now 
and uh, and he would be visiting Oklahoma right now. I mean, th- there's all those things in play, but as it is, we just kind of have to go with, well, okay, I'm going to call this kid and do an interview just like I would for anything else. There's no tangible information to kind of sink your teeth into. You you just Jazz Reynolds just came out when you thought of idiot recruits, didn't he? Ooh. <laughs> The correlation. That's not nice. He actually Ouch. made it, though. I mean, all the way through. Like, he did. Camille after Jackson. How many times did idiot. you think Jazz Reynolds was done at Oklahoma? At least four? Yeah, after he yep. threatened the uh, <laughs> University of Texas campus with gun violence. Yeah. That was probably when I thought it was going to be over for him. Mm-hmm. Don't, there was, dude, a, don't there was, a, there was quite a receiving core back then. It was it Camille Jackson that transferred to A&M without telling Kevin Sumlin. All-time right. move. He announced it on Twitter. I'm good. I'm transferring. All right. He, he beat Baker Mayfield to the punch. We don't give him credit for that. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I mean, we got a, a discussion about all-time knuckleheads the other day because of the Buki thing. Mm-hmm. People forget what a knucklehead Tony Cade was. Oh. I wasn't around oh. for that. I don't know. Like, knucklehead is kind of like, oh, you, you little... You little so and so, Tony Cade's like you're kind of scary. Like you're well, you're, he's I not like I he's not like you. he's not like what's his name scary from Waco. Oh, Paris, Paris Cobb. 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 Yeah. Uh, I you thought maybe, maybe it could go that way? Yeah, I would agree. Oh, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, there is a story I, that was told by somebody that disavowed us all about uh, Bob Stoops thinking he had a gun in the parking lot. Yep, I've heard that one. I, I've heard that he was threatening to fight multiple coaches at his last practice at Oklahoma. Like, it was <laughs> – I, I heard it got pretty spicy there at the end for Tony Cade. <laughs> Sounds like a Scoop HD dream. Well, yeah. I'd love to got all that on film. Yeah, I you know. I got Josh Jarbo to have to be on your list. Uh, the artist. He's an artist. <laughs> I will never forget. Um, why am I Ben uh, uh, Hayburn jumping in the back of that video like in the old bud in the old bud like he was like he was ha- he was half joking but he also knew that he was gonna get he was screwing himself I, uh, this camera stops working <laughs> turn off turn off Okay, that, those were good times. That's, that's my list. Those were good times. Oh, we could we could go through the whole knucklehead collection. Brian Zimple doesn't get enough credit. Oh as boy, a, as a knucklehead, Brent Rawls. There's another good one yeah. from long ago. Brent Rawls is the one that everybody brings up. You got to throw Bomar in oh, there yeah. too. You, yeah, yep. Uh, They're all one and the same. Would uh, who was? Who was Rawls' kind of, was it Jake Hager? Was that the guy that he ran around with? There was some stuff around that OU Texas weekend that year that I can't there was talk some about kind of any wild of this. rumors if I remember right. Yeah. I can't speak okay. about any of this. Okay. Okay. Yeah, there there was there's OU's were out there you, sure. Were you the there's accomplice? No. Were you dealing? God damn it. No. Terry. Yeah, that's how I got my that's that's how I got all my that's, info back in the days. Hey, you know. Whatever gets it done. Hunter we'll Wall was pretty dad. big uh, knucklehead. Yes. Yes. I remember some of those. I was on campus for some of that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Let's just say he was. He would often get caught coming out of people's windows. He liked to steal. There's so many ways that could go. He liked to steal stuff. Really? Now that part I hadn't heard. I guess I better not say stuff like that. <laughs> you just, you're you're going to scratch that on the uh, later, aren't you? Oh, I'm too be lazy going, really? to do that now. Yeah, you got me like scared now. I'm wondering if I need to start watching what I say. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, my God, uh, basketball is starting. Maybe. That's bizarre. Ready or not. Yes. 
I mean, well, I'll see you guys later. I I love them. <laughs> Thanks, Josh. I love the way that Lon, Lon Kruger handled that Monday. I mean, that was just like a matter of fact. He's, he's just like, yeah, we could cancel the day up. We could travel, get to the destination, and then find out someone tested positive and contact tracing, and then the game is canceled. I mean, and he just he's just classic Lon. He's just going to yeah. go with the flow. He's not like up in arms about it make just making the scene it's like okay that's that's how it's gonna be you know you mentioned that uh bob and that's exactly what happened to wichita state they got up to south dakota tested really realized that half the team had it and wow i think they're quarantining right now in south dakota because i think the thing with football is you play saturday you know sure. how to make the schedule when you're playing like on a monday one week tuesday the next week like, how do you get those three tests in in a in the most efficient way so that you can sort of avoid that situation? I don't know the answer to that. It's yeah, it's it seems like it's doesn't seem impossible, but it just seems like it's going to be a mess. I mean, the I mean, it's happened even in football like Utah's played one game and other people have played four in the Pac-12. Speaking of, do you see who they uh, ruled out for the rest of the year for Utah? Oh, surely not. Cam, Ron- yeah. Cam, Cam Rising. Cam, Rising. Cam Rising's out for the year. Got he had won, he had won the starting job. Yeah. I yeah. did not realize that. Hmm. It's amazing. Like, OU has completely changed the way we view transfer quarterbacks. Because before Baker Mayfield and Kyler Murray, there was a stigma around transfer quarterbacks that if you transferred, no one ever heard from you again. And you, yeah. could, you could say kind of the same thing for Shane Bouchel. He just picked the right place. I think that's well, what it comes down to is just making the right decision where you're transferring to. And that's why this whole thing is so damn hilarious when they try to make it as like, well, Spencer Rattler didn't have the advantage of being a transfer. Since when has that been an advantage? Like, yeah, Oklahoma it's been a stigma. made that an advantage. Yeah. Yes, it's always been a negative. Mac Jones and has kind of done the same thing at Alabama. He's stuck it out. Yeah. He was supposed to be the placeholder, basically, for Bryce Young, wasn't he? Exactly. Your boy, Eddie. Your boy. He is a king. (laughs) Look, I like everything about Bryce Young. I think he'll he'll be a good quarterback. Oh, sure. I mean, look at... I mean, he he only changed choices, but... Like, I really wonder what Brock Vandegrift is going to be like at Georgia. I mean, JT Daniels has three more years, right? Because nobody's el- ineligible this year. Right. He's a no, sophomore. Year. Yeah. So, and he doesn't strike me as a guy that's going to go early to the NFL because he doesn't have the arm strength. Well, neither did Jake Fromm, and he still made that decision. Jake Fromm, I think, had a better arm. It wasn't good, but I think it's better than yeah, JT Daniels. Yeah, yeah, but bad decisions are boy. made all the time. Get your boy. Sure. Even early. No, you're right, Bob. <laughs> It'll be interesting to see if anybody makes a bad decision in Norman. Yes, this next month's going to be intense. But OU does open back, back to hoops. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to kick to the curb. Get us. That's all right. Or if anyone gets kicked kick to the curb that wants to come back for like a six six year, <laughs> they don't want them to. And they're like, no, nah, that's okay. <laughs> you go ahead. And sure about that? Try your luck at the NFL. <laughs> well, and it's I I think. I mean, with basketball, OU, start, OU opens with UTSA. And, and then they're at Central Florida Saturday. Yep. And then they play Florida next Wednesday, but Florida's on pause throughout this week. So we don't know if the Gators will be ready to go for next week just yet. And that's the crazy thing is, I mean, there's so many more teams in college basketball, but there's so many teams that don't have big budget athletic departments. Yeah, and like you see the list, like that. I don't know if it's Rothstein or who puts it out yeah, every day. It Goodman is. every day. Yep. Rothstein. And it's it's a bunch of bookworm colleges, like places that you don't really think of. Like I, I, I mean, I'm just trying to think of an example, like Sienna or something like that. Like it's just a bunch of weird schools, small schools. But Oklahoma's even had a little bit of an outbreak that they've dealt with. 
Yeah, I think they that dealt with it. They they feel a lot better. Now you want to talk about sound concerned at all? Herd immunity. That's the people that should be getting herd immunity. Basketball programs. <laughs> Just because they're so small. Yeah. It uh, I it it has almost felt overwhelming. I think Brady even mentioned this yesterday, Bob. You know, ev- it seems like almost every thirty minutes you're seeing something scroll across the bottom like this school is shut down but i think it is just because there are so many schools that play division one basketball yeah i don't think it says yeah. it like 300 right 300 <sighs> yeah like 340 something 30 yeah i mean and the bad thing is they're happen. starting at the worst possible time they're oh, starting sure. at the time when schools knew that they had to shut down because sure. of thanksgiving yeah the 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 spike rates are you know double of what they were when even football was starting back in august or July. And hospitals are full. So it's just, it's the worst possible time to be starting. A se- like the NBA, yeah, they got they they got knocked out. Same as college when they closed the tournaments. Like I was talking to Lon this morning, and he was kind of recounting, you know, what they went through getting ready to play. Uh, was it West Virginia in the Big 12 tournament? And they were there ready to go, and then they canceled it and they haven't played since like at least the nba took a few months and that was when you know and the bubble made all the difference i mean they could be in the bubble right now if they wanted to and still pull it off it's just that it's everywhere right now like i don't know how you can avoid it it's going to be really interesting to see what happens with basketball. You know, you, with the tra- I mean, the travel is what kills you. Yeah, and there's been a lot yeah. of uh, even you know I think it was Rick Pitino that's been very vocal about moving it all, just moving it back a month, trying May Madness. Yeah, it's. I don't think that's a bad idea. I I I, I would have said that except I saw Dan Wolken praising him, so I <laughs> didn't want to. I didn't even know that up. he was still around. BYU okay. uh, or not BYU? Tulsa just had to cancel their game against Houston. Houston canceled it. Well, like if if you were worried about the American Conference or the MAC with their protocols, when you get into those basketball conferences that are small, you have no no clue what they're doing to try to make sure that they can play. It's all understanding. Sure. Well, the 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 Ivy they're canceled, right? Is the Patriot yes. still canceled? Mm-mm. I don't know. Do you want better? Who cares? <laughs> like, I mean, U U T S A. I mean, you 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 hope their protocol has been pretty well, but that's and that's the other thing that Lon said a couple weeks ago. It's not about just getting through the game. Then you got to make sure one two days after that your previous opponent is still good, or else you could be screwed there too. Because of contact tracing. Yep. I just don't, I mean, I don't know how basketball is going to go. I just don't think that there's, I don't think we've seen like a chain reaction in football, have we? I mean, like where a team play, like, oh, you played Kansas State when they had an outbreak, didn't lead to them having an outbreak. No, because I don't think it can be transmitted on football fields. I mean, it just doesn't seem like it. No, it doesn't. I mean, they did, Manny Diaz did that huge ass like study, didn't he? Like way back in. June, I didn't see all that. It was like after he he went through all the practices and like you know broke it down like oh, you know like offensive linemen are touching it? defensive linemen this long okay, during a practice. You, I remember that happening now. Yeah, there's been a lot of optic decisions. I, in my opinion, well, I I saw something today. They're hoping that maybe the CDC can take it from 14 days to 10 days on the contact tracing, and maybe sure. even seven days. Mm-hmm. And if that happens, it kind of opens things up a little bit. But, I mean, that really is the key. I mean, it's just like the, the Big Ten, that 21 days or 28 days with the monitoring. I mean, it's, it's awful. Ridi- it's ridiculous. It's awful and ridiculous. And it's not awful because you're protecting people from COVID. It's the contact tracing. You can do enough tests to clear people before then. You're just being extra too careful, probably. Yeah, I would agree. So, yeah, I mean, it's going to be really interesting seeing because basketball, like you said, you play so much, you travel so much more. It's not just a one day a week thing. And you're 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 monitoring or you're testing is basically mobile the entire time. Yep. So you can be anywhere and get it or find you yep. get it. And I just think that, you know, basketball guys are 
kind of you're on each other more. It's like, aren't you? Well, like, but even at practice things, and games and they're doing things to distance and meetings. And well, things I'm sure, like that. I'm sure, but it, I just think like the simple act of playing the game, you're right up in somebody's face as opposed to tackling somebody, getting up and yeah, maybe so. I don't know. And I'll have my preview up first thing tomorrow morning. Tomorrow night, LNC. Taking Steve Henson percent. out? You taking Steve Henson out to dinner? Maybe a little Bienvenuti's tonight? That sounds good. Hmm? I haven't been there in a while. Should go. Excellent pizza. Bienvenuti's yep. has great pizza. It's a great it restaurant. It used to be our post-game meal. Yeah, it was really good. All right. Um, Say anything about I, West the, Virginia? I find it very intriguing. <laughs> I don't think it's going to be easy. No, it's not. They're no. they're a good team. Now, if Oklahoma is the team they have been, they could win that game easily. Sure. They could go up there and win by a couple touchdowns. How much better, Josh, do you think West Virginia is today than West Virginia that played Oklahoma State? A lot. A lot. They 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 know who they are on offense now. Like I, I think the defense has always had good pieces. Obviously the two brothers up front are are dudes um, and that, that'll be interesting to see, yeah that'll be interesting to see how Oklahoma handles that but um no I, I I like what West Virginia brings and you know we I didn't get to be on the pod last week but you guys said it and I agreed I thought West Virginia was a much scarier game for Oklahoma than Oklahoma State was I I, I just night game Morgantown I know you know it's not the atmosphere even if some people are trying to make that a storyline I don't know any of them but I've heard talk um, it's it's Morgantown. It, it's been a tough place for Oklahoma through the years, and again, it's a defensive line that Oklahoma that it's going to beat Oklahoma. Sometimes they're going to make some plays because those two guys are no doubt NFL guys. And then offensively, it's just a you know I don't think West Virginia can block Oklahoma all night, but that's a better offensive line than what OU went against last week. So we'll just I, I think this is gonna be an interesting game. I do think Oklahoma is better. And as long as they can avoid big mistakes, kinda of like we talked about earlier with Spencer Rattler, just doing what he needs to do, I think Oklahoma's gonna be okay. It's just that I think the margin for error is smaller. Bob, what was the what was the catch this week with uh, Spencer Rattler kind of uh, maybe maybe hinting that Stogner was already out? For this week, yeah, because he kind of said with with Stogner being out, it's good that Braden Willis is back. So I didn't know if he was saying because of last week, yeah, or if he was already insinuating that Stogner is going to miss the upcoming game. Because he, he the way he phrased it, it wasn't like past tense, but it was present present tense that could have meant past tense type of deal. I'll have to look at the e- exact wording. There's a lot of wee scenes, too, so I don't really... It's hard to parse grammar from college kids. Jared Daigie's had a really good year. Yeah. Poor Austin Kendall. Austin yeah. Kendall wasn't any good. <laughs> he was never any good. Well, I mean, him and Baker battled it out, didn't they? So or, did I mean, Ky- Kyler? So did, Kyler. So did, so did Tanner Mordecai and Spencer Rattler. Huh? <laughs> I love a good good quarterback competition. Now, if you want to tell me Spencer Rattler and Jalen Hurts battled it out, I might believe you. Maybe. There's no way that Kyler Murray battled anybody. I think it's pretty apparent that Neil Brown's a pretty good football coach. Yes. I didn't know how good he was yep. the first year. And I, you know, Dana I mean, left the that. he left the cover bare. Well, he they had to kind of. It wasn't that he left the cover bare. It's that. Uh, the uh, Dave Groening, is that his name? Groening? The defensive coordinator that they fired? Oh, yeah, he was a madman. Like, chased everybody off. Like, That's they probably had, true, too. They lost, like, seemed like about 12 safeties during COVID, the shutdown. No, they lost everybody. Yeah, and they're good on defense. They're the best defense Done a good job. in the Big 12. Done a really good job. But, no, Neil Brown is done a masterful job i think that's probably I they why it's gonna be a shit show it's probably why he's a name that's coming up for south carolina right now yeah and lincoln was asked this week about 
Shane Beamer's name coming up for that. I mean, I think I think that's not a matter of if, but when Shane Beamer's hired to be a head coach somewhere. I just don't know if it's this one. The thing about anybody on the offensive side of the ball is it doesn't really affect anything unless Lincoln takes an NFL job because he is he is the offense. I would say yes, that's true, but I Beamer's done a great job with that H back. Oh no, he has. I'm not saying that he wouldn't be a loss. Sure, I'm just saying you don't freak out about it. like. Alex Grinch goes somewhere, he takes his entire defense with him. And probably a lot of yeah. his coaching staff. You think? He takes Roy Banning. He takes Brian Odom. Mm. I wonder if he'd take both. I wonder if they, they wouldn't try to elevate Odom to D.C.? Or Yeah, I mean, and I, not that Manning couldn't be too, but Odom has all the yeah, connections the fact to the that state and the, the university. The fact and, that Odom is from here, played here. Yeah. I sure. think there's a good chance that he becomes like a co DC. Cause I think he's a he's a bright guy. You know, yep. it, it's kind of funny how, you know, like the the cycles go, but I would imagine with the way that OU's playing defensively, it's only going to be a matter of time before Grinch's name comes back up in that head coaching. Remember, it was like last year and everybody kind of got worried about it. And I guess maybe this year it might work out for the better for Oklahoma because I don't know how many schools are going to be looking for a head coach because I the the money situation at a lot of places. But like I, the people that are going to be looking for head coaches are going to want the cream of the crop. That's sure, the thing. they're going to sure. want Urban Meyer. Sure, maybe a workout for OU though that it's like a kind of a good deal. They get him. I don't know. Selfishly, I just want to see what this defense could do one more year in twenty one because I you know it. They're not saying it, but I think everybody's kind of looking towards twenty one as. That's a put up or shut up year. Winning the Big Twelve Championships not enough next year. No. But are you losing Ronnie Perkins? Sure. I mean, yeah, Perry you, you gotta answer all those questions. Isaiah Thomas. Nick I mean, right Benito. now I would say yes on three of the four. Ramondre, Perion, and Ronnie. I think Benito would come back. That's Boy, just pure speculation. Yeah, I mean, I don't know anything either, but Perion seems like that would be too soon. Sure. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I, mm -hmm. somebody oh, I, could get crazy, but he feels like if that guy came back and had a full year to prepare and could do everything like he wanted to, I feel like he could be a top 12, 15 pick. Like, he has that kind of ability. And there's just no way they could justify that in a weird COVID year that, you know, coming out of Juco, he's got some background stuff. Like, I, it just feels like one year to show, hey, okay, I'm, we're good, everything's normal, like I, I'm going to be fine. When I say that I think Perion would leave, that is fully with the idea of I don't know how much Perion Winfrey wants to come play school again for eight more yeah, months. Yeah, I, I would say he's clearly been suspended twice this season for first quarters. Like I, it is, yep. it is it one hundred percent not a thing of I think he's accomplished enough to be able to say. I can go, but that would be a, I'm just not going to put up with this shit anymore. I want to make as much money as I can and I'll figure it out later. It, it's going to be, it's going to be similar to that. And it also might be Oklahoma being like, look, it's not that it's time for you to go, but you can get out of here. If you come back, with, we're going to have some rules here. Yeah. You can get right. out of here you got, with, you got away with some stuff with this year. your reputation still attached. If you leave now. So you oh, might I mean, want to do that. If, I, if I'm if i OU, I'm trying to figure out ways to get everybody back. Oh, yeah. And if, I think if, Lincoln's that kind of guy, If I have too. to drop off some suitcases at people's houses in St. Louis and other places, maybe we figure that out. It'd be a job Guys, for the bag. The, of the three of them, the one that I think has the most compelling argument to return might be Ronnie. Yeah. I, because yeah. he's such a... He's like, a tweener the in the NFL. Guys, yeah. Well, he's a tweener, and the other guys are JUCO guys. Like, they've been other places. They've been through some things. They probably at different times in their careers were like, I don't know if this is going to work out. Ronnie was a big-time recruit. He's been part of the program. Like, he's clearly one of the leaders of that defense. And, like, he knows. I mean, these guys aren't stupid. They know what next year could be with the right setup. Sure. Like, you wonder if he's like, I, I, I could do this with my guys. Like, we, we, could, we could do something special. You I know, heard that kind of thing. I heard Teddy Lehman talking about this the other day when I was driving around. I think it was on your show, wasn't it? Yeah, we had him. He brought it up, and I had not even 
about being a, a little bit of a tweener and being a and guy he made that made the Khalil Mack comparison as far as size, not as a player, but he said at his size. See, I listen to your show in the evenings when they play it. Uh, they said he said Teddy said comparatively sized he would be what Khalil Mack is, but he has never played standing up. Maybe that's the pitch that the defense and that Grinch will make to him. Like, look, you may not be a cinch high draft pick as a hand in the dirt guy, but why don't you come back and we'll do some some Khalil Mack type stuff with you and see if we can improve your draft stock. I'd be fascinated to know if that's the type of pitch that Alex Grinch would make to somebody. And how receptive would Ronnie be after going through all the bullshit that he did over the yeah? The that's last the one thing with he and Ramondre, and that's why I wrote in the roundtable. It's like I would, I, I could see that argument, but I could also see him saying, "Why would I put up with this shit anymore?" Yeah. Well, they're probably not going to the college football playoff this yeah. year, so they. But it's not also it's not also OU that has punished him either. So it's not like he's taking it out on OU. You think if if. Lincoln Riley could go back in time. He would, like, decline the offer to play in the college football playoff last year. Well, Josh probably would have told him to go to the Sugar Bowl instead. <laughs> Bam. Play Bam. Georgia. Yeah. That was just such a costly loss for a number of reasons. I, I think say, so. tell me something good that came out of going to that game. I'll mm. listen to any of it. I don't know. People were I mean, stalking as as some of the players media. walking around Atlanta. I knew that you were going to say that. <laughs> that was interesting. That was the only thing. That was, was the only it. thing that came out of it. No, it, they ran into a, I mean, that was just a train. It was almost like nobody and you knew lost it at the three time. Three players, three of your, your sure. biggest key players. Sure. And Turner Yell. Yeah. Well, he was going to be back for this season. I'm just saying, I'm looking at it in terms of he would turn it down because of how much it's destroyed this season. I mean, that wasn't just losing a game last year. That was also ripping apart your season this year. Yep, you screwed yourself for 2020 as well. Yeah. If OU would have held on to Kansas State, are they in the national championship talk right now? Yep. No yes. doubt about it. The way it. they're playing, I think yes. they they would be Shit, people right want to make that conversation behind, right now, and they have two losses. They would be right behind yep. BYU and Cincinnati, I think, when the rankings come out this week. Agreed. Guys, honestly, or, or the two. way they're playing right now, I don't think they beat – they, they wouldn't beat Alabama. They wouldn't beat Clemson. They wouldn't beat Ohio State. I don't think there's another team in the country they can't beat the way they're playing football right now. How would they match up against and I Notre think with Dame? Clemson, Ohio State, they would be vaguely competitive. Like they might lose forty two twenty eight or something like that. We just haven't seen the real Clemson this year. That's the problem I sure. have. I don't it's, know if they're as good at running back as they have been in offensive line. They're well, not I as mean, good on defensive line. Indians well, awesome. Running back. They got Etienne. They, I, I don't monsters. I don't love him. Ooh. Oh, hot God. take. God. Carry, carry, <laughs> That's gonna be on the internet forever. <laughs> I've got, I've got to go. I've got to go get my children here at some point. We can't have this. I don't have the time to get into you with Trevor Etienne. God, I'll go watch I'm some excited. highlights and then I'll declare whether I'm an idiot or I'll 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 uh, what do they say? Eddie, I'll bunker. Carrie, in. I, I, uh, Bob, I think I just realized this. Kerry has an anti Clemson agenda. You got to realize he I will really, not concede to Trevor Lawrence. You got to realize I really fucking hate Clemson. I mean, the Walmart sweatpants bowl is what did it to me. <laughs> yeah, they ruined you. Yeah. They absolutely ruined you. That was, that was a tough. One. <laughs> well, just dealing with their media contingent, they're yeah, the worst. It was. Yeah, it they're was. the then worst. Oh, Dabo is the worst. The very next year, you play you played them again. The very next year, had the same media contingent. Clemson's worse than A and M. Really, it's different. I feel it's like that, it's different. It's that same level of weirdness. Okay. It it really is. But like Okay. It's just the thing is, A and M worships the weirdos. Like yes. like Billy Lucci is they the like king. They accept it. Yes. I don't think Clemson like accepts it. No, I don't think Because it's just so. such a new thing. They're just for kind Clemson. of losery people. When I think of Clemson, I think of jean shorts. And then I think of Davo. It's like a triangle. Dabo's working harder than any coach in 2020 to cancel himself. 
I know, and he like keeps trying to. And it's like <laughs> at talking. some point somebody's gonna do it, but nobody's taking the bait. It's because he's at Clemson. He's like, if Mike Gundy were winning championships, he could say all the shit that he's been saying, and nobody That's would true. do anything. That is true. He could wear all the OAN T-shirts he wanted, and nobody would say anything. I think that's a fair way to put it. You know what would be interesting is if Shane Bouchelle leaves SMU after this year. If I was Spencer Sanders, I might call down to SMU and see what they're doing. Hmm. Are you saying that you, you think that Spencer Sanders' career is essentially over at Oklahoma State after after Bedlam? Yes. There was a point like when I, lo- I, I panned down to, to the... Are they going to move on to Gunnar Gundy? <sighs> I, it's interesting. I think Carson Cunningham <laughs> threw, it out, threw that out there. Like, There's some Bob Simmons vibes there as far as like bringing your son in. Maybe he's, maybe he's the reason he, he stays on and then leaves yeah, after that. Yeah, but his son was rated really high as Nathan, a recruit. Yeah. Nathan Simmons? Yeah. He just wasn't as good as people thought he was. I mean, he could have gone. I mean, it was a battle, wasn't it, between Colorado and Oklahoma State? To sign it was. Him. Who was the kid that he could that he wasn't better than? They had a good back that year. Uh, Jamal Fobbs. Jamal Fobbs. So, yeah. yeah, that's who. Is it that was. right? Okay. Yeah. He he was he was a good player. Yeah. And you're like right. Jamal. Nathan was a good player. He just wasn't as good as Fobbs. Um. I mean, you guys yeah. have seen Gunner Gundy a lot. He's a he's a good quarterback. I mean, solid. Yeah. It's kind of yeah. like I took issue this week with, and I, I have nothing against Jessica Cootie. Jessica, you do a good job. Uh, but. It, she did a thing on Drake Stoops, and I just when you get into this thing about people that don't, and it's not it's with everybody. It's not just Jessica. You get in this thing of trying to portray every walk on as like some guy that came out of nowhere. Like we all saw Drake Stoops in high school, and we all said to ourselves, you know that kid could really play. He'll get a scholarship somewhere. He's not OU good. And then as it went on, we were like, well, he'll probably just walk on at OU. Like, we all knew what he was going to do. And we all knew he could play. And we knew, uh, well, now it's Charlie Kohler, not Kolar. Uh, We knew he could play. We thought that Jordan Evans could play. Like, but people did not offer them scholarships, not a lot of big-time schools, but you knew they could. It's not like he was just some, you know shithead just out there roaming around that nobody knew about. Everybody knew about Drake Stoops yeah. and Isaac Stoops and Charlie Kohler. So, like, this whole thing about they said he was too small, they said he was too slow. Nobody said that! Like, maybe Alabama said that, but everyone who watched Drake Stoops thought, damn, that kid's really good. I wonder where he's going to play college football. I just, I don't know. I don't know why that bothers me so much. It just does. And th- hey, Kerry, welcome. To- this is my life. I have to hear about guys that were under. Oh, the Josh Jacobs thing, I mean, like, is the king of it all. I mean. I, God, you had to say his name. <laughs> like, can we just not say his name? It's, it's, a, it's a trigger for me. He's having a good year. He's a really good football player. I said as much in high school to anyone that would listen. <laughs> Although, I. I have I told the Kansas story? I've told the story that I, I, I reached out to some people around the Kansas program and was told they were they were all set at running back for that class. We're good. Kansas. We're straight. Well, that's why there's Kansas reason, is running a good program right now. That's, there's a reason your staff got fired. Yeah, but that staff is better than this staff. I agree. That David, might be a fact. David, I thought it was criminal David Beatty got fired. I think he would have done something if given time. I think he more – did he get fired as much as it was like a, you need to – we need to get you gone because there's some shit going down? I think it was, oh, we can get less miles. Better. We got to get rid of you. Really? Yeah. Because that stuff about the the violations, that was kind of – I always felt like that was kind of trumped up BS. I thought they used that to get him out of there more so. Well, they so. did, but then when it went to court, it didn't hold water. And they basically yeah, had you, to pay him everything, well, you every know, penny of his buy I think what it boils down to is just a big distraction to get the FBI off of Bill Self's case. <laughs> Seriously. I could see Kansas doing some shit like that. It's, it's amazing that they fought, that the University of Kansas fought all that basketball stuff 
Yet they they called David Beatty a cheater. Yeah. It's it, it's the most obnoxious thing of all time. I think that's why everybody hates Kansas basketball. Still waiting for them to get... It was all just to try and get out of a buyout that they didn't want to pay. I don't think they thought he was a cheater. They just wanted, they wanted to save some money. Is he still helping down at Texas? I think that fell apart rather quickly. Or did he not even get down there? I don't Austin? think he ever got down. I think it was... It was rumored, maybe like Anwar, somebody had reported it, but then it never really happened. I think that's what happened. Or maybe it was just that week of the Big 12 championship game that he helped. Oh, yeah. And then like it, was, he was it was supposedly nothing, was helping. nothing more than that. Who wins that game Friday? Iowa State, State, Texas? Yeah. I mean, it, isn't I it kind of crazy? Iowa State, but I mean... It's, it's wild that they're still like... I was kind of sort of under the impression that oh, OU controlled their destiny no matter what. I think Kansas State's going to keep losing, though. I, I do, too. But, I I mean, I could see it being very Texas for them to beat Iowa State this weekend and then go up to Manhattan and lose. This is, I mean, this is Texas Super Bowl this week. I think I honestly think if they lose, I think Tom Herman's no longer the head coach at, at Texas. <sighs> Not to mention that it's Shane Bouchel or uh, uh, Sam Ellinger's last home football game in Austin. I mean, they should have a... Damn parade for that, even though parades have been canceled. Bob's going Submariner again. Bob, do we have you? I bet he had to do kid stuff. Yeah. Well, uh, stop bothering us if you're not here. I missed that Texas opened as a favorite against Iowa State. I just don't think anybody can trust Brock Purdy. I know he played well last week. That thing was over before it even started. Yeah. And I State did not show up. I think that there's also this thought that maybe Texas is okay. I mean, it's just weird. It's been a weird year. It's never felt like there's been any rhythm to the college football season. And now you look at these, you know, a couple games or a couple weeks coming up. It's pretty big, big games being played in the Big 12 world. I It's as fun a year as I can remember in the Big 12 as far as that goes because there's so many scenarios that could play out if one thing breaks wrong or goes the other way. Like you said, it feels like we know what's going to happen, but one game goes differently than you think, and all, all hell kind of breaks loose. I mean, I would love to see OU Texas in the Big 12 championship game. I think it just comes. I just don't think it's going to happen. I just think it comes down to we're talking about OU and how well they're playing, and they are. I don't know about Iowa State. But I do know that OU is capable of playing at a higher standard than everybody else. Sure. And the rest of the Big 12 is just not great. No, it isn't. It'd just be something if OU makes this miraculous like turnaround and then Texas is the one that screws it up for everybody and OSU and Iowa State play in the Big 12 championship game. Like how, how 2020 just messed up would that be? Yeah, that would be pretty weird. There would be some takes on the internet about that. Because it, ha- it goes to the fourth-place team, right? And Kansas State team. would be the fourth-place team, and OU lost, and OSU beat them. be an, it, insane. I don't think that's going to happen, but it's still out there. But if West Virginia was the fourth-place team... That would mean West Virginia, what? Then it would fall to Kansas State, the fifth-place team? <sighs> Those... Well, I mean, it it would depend because West Virginia plays Iowa State next week. Okay. And it depends what they would have to do this week, obviously. I don't know if Texas beat Iowa State. I mean, if Texas, West Virginia if OU could definitely and, beat Iowa if State. If OU and Texas went out, OU they and Texas play. are playing in the Big 12 championship yeah. game, which would just be another incredible 2020 moment. But that would also have to have Iowa State losing twice. Well, they would... Uh, no, I mean, because someone other than Texas. Well, Texas would only have lost would twice. Say, they would have the tiebreaker against Texas. But oh, you wouldn't. That's why it falls down to Kansas State. Oh, I see what you're saying. So Iowa State would have to lose to Texas and West Virginia for Texas and OU to play. Which is possible. Well, that's possible. Yeah. West Virginia is going to have a really interesting role in how this season closes. Sure. And they're kind of the team that nobody talks about. Mm-hmm. They are. Now, they are a different team outside of Morgantown. Like, I don't, I certainly wouldn't expect them to roll into Ames next week and win. Yeah. It'll be interesting. 
All right, guys. Uh, that was an extra long podcast for uh, Thanksgiving. I'm sure some, those of you that are disobeying the CDC like most of us are. I hope you're playing it around the family dinner. Uh, GBCC committee uh, meeting. Oh, yeah. We meet every week. GBC co- committee? GBC committee, yeah. We meet every week. I hope this podcast is played at people's Thanksgivings. Just as they're carving the turkey? Right. Sitting down. I should leave the F-bombs go, in this Yeah, week. go look at the ant that just, you, you just don't like. I had a Tell TV her off. in there. I'm trying to think. I, I think I only have one ant and one uncle. Really? No, I get two I ants. I got lots. I got two I got, ants. I got lots. Two ants and one uncle. They don't all live together. Yeah. I got two very different sides. Like my, my mom's side, very small family. My dad's side, humongous family. So are you in Oklahoma for Thanksgiving at all, or are you staying down in no, Houston? No, no. We'll come up for Christmas, but you, Thanksgiving, we tried it a couple of years, and it, even when it was just Tiffany and I, that's, it's just a pain, man. It's hard, and like I said, it's, you know, it's a meal. I mean, for those who want to be Thanksgiving warriors, it's a meal, you know, whatever. I'll come up for the holidays. All right. Uh, well, I want to wish everybody out there, we all do, a, a very happy Thanksgiving. Um, they're still playing football. West Virginia coming up this weekend. We uh, we are being COVID irresponsible for Thanksgiving, but I did not want to send anybody to West Virginia via Pittsburgh to travel. Just my choice. So we'll all be here uh, doing Zoom calls because that's what we'll be doing. I mean, the thing is, you go to a game... Travel. I mean, we can't do video either. I mean, yeah, we can't do video. You sit in a press box the entire time. You don't get to go down on the field. You don't even get to leave your your seat. And you you sit in the press box and you do a Zoom call. So to me, it just I do like being at a game. There's just stuff you can see that you can't see. But is it worth traveling right now? I don't. Think. I mean, I think it's worth going to like Ames. It's worth going. Oh to, yeah, yeah. You know, if you Waco can drive somewhere, or still water. An eighteen hour drive. Yeah, you can't do that. Morgantown. It'll be interesting to see. Just you know, getting ahead of ourselves, but like if you if OU is in the Big Twelve Championship game, it'll be interesting to see what they. I'm I'm sure the protocols will all still be the same and stuff like that. But I wonder if you can get more than one person into a press box. I don't know. It'll be interesting. Eleven a.m. kick. It'll be. Yeah, eleven a.m. kick on the nineteenth. By the way, that thing at the Cowboys facility today ended up being a They tried to kill somebody. Coach. They tried to kill somebody. I don't know if they tried to kill anybody. Well, not they, but everybody was talking oh, like the guy had died. Yeah, he, yeah, he's, yeah. he's alive. Did you see they changed his Wikipedia page before it was even announced? Everybody who it was? was talking like he was dead. He's not dead. He's still alive. It was unbelievable. It was really It was like strange. somebody had leaked it and then some reporters just ran with it. Yeah. It's irresponsible. <laughs> <laughs> the guy's alive. Very alive. Ombudsman Eddie Erdosovich. I mean, my gosh. All right. Well, uh, thank God no more Zoom calls for us for the rest of the week. We're just waiting for some more football. Uh, Well, there will be Zoom for basketball, unfortunately, if they play. We'll see. Still not sure on that one. So thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Happy Thanksgiving to you and your family. I hope it's a great one. Be careful out there. Mask up. Be safe. Uh, We want everybody coming back healthy. Uh, even if you're like us in breaking recommendations, not laws, recommendations and going to see the family. Uh, so thanks everybody for listening. Thanks to Dead Soxy. Remember, use that uh, discount code Boomer for forty one percent off. Thanks to that Bedlam win, uh, and you do that as quickly as you hear this because that offer will not last long. So thanks everybody for listening. Thanks to uh, Bob. We had to take off a little early. Josh, Eddie. I'm Kerry Murdoch, and you've been listening to the Unofficial 40 Podcast from Soonerscoop.com.